Welcome to For the Common Good with Juanita Farrow, a show where we, we inform, inspire, and empower our communities, businesses, and people just like you. I'm excited about the show today because we're talking about Together We Can Rise. Nonprofits are the lifeline of our communities. We depend on nonprofits to provide necessary services in those communities and serve many times people who are underserved in those communities. We rely on our nonprofits to fill that void. Well, today we're talking to the executive director of an organization called RISE, which means restoring individuals through social and spiritual empowerment. And the executive director is Mr. Reginald Braxton. Uh, Mr. Braxton uh, started the company, he's CEO of the company, has a passion for helping people in the community, and he's also a teacher, so he stays very busy. So help me welcome to the show, Reginald Braxton. Welcome to the show! Well, thank you for inviting me. You are so welcome. I'm so glad that you are on the show. I love nonprofits. I've worked a great deal with nonprofits in my life, and I truly mean that. Is Nonprofits are the lifeline of our communities. So I wanted to ask you about, you founded uh, RISE, so you're founder and CEO. Of, you know, what, what was the story behind that? The story behind that is that there are just so many things in the community that people are in need of. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, so I just fell in love with um, just doing that. I mean, especially with you know, the people that are homeless and the, people, the, the, the elderly. Um, the youth, they, they all just need something to do. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. So was it something in particular, I mean, the company started in 2017. 17. Um, you wake up one morning and you go, I think I'll start a nonprofit. No, I used to work <laughs> in a, work with another nonprofit. Oh, uh, so you had some background yes. in nonprofit mm -hmm. uh, organizations. And was it something working in that nonprofit that um, made you well, think I need to I start just, this? Well, I am just um, a given person anyway, so I just fell in love with the other organization, and I just carried on to my organization. Wow. Okay. Well, let's talk about some of because I know there are a lot of services that you provide um, the community. Um, and, and so, can you talk a little bit about some of the programs that uh, you? you know, things that you offer in the organization? Mostly we do is um, feeding the homeless and the elderly. So we go into the community to feed the homeless. And we serve food to the elderly in their homes, I mean, either their homes or at their, um, hmm, what you call it? The place of living, mm -hmm. where you have a group of seniors living together, mm -hmm. apartments, I guess. So we go out there and do that for them. Uh, we have, um, school drives where mm -hmm. we collect um, school supplies mm -hmm. to give back to the youth mm -hmm. before they go back to school and we have the Christmas drive where we collect toys mm -hmm. um, we give those back to the community and we have what else do we have we have a lot of things going on this so what else there's a, there's a huge need it yeah. sounds like um, so, you know, many of the people that you serve are, you know, very vulnerable population, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, they may not, there may not be a lot of family support, and um, when you talk about homeless, now RISE is located in the um, Hampton Roads, Virginia um, community, do you see a lot of need in the community? There is a need, not a lot of need, yes, in some areas, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some areas are better than others. Mm -hmm. Always. But yeah. we go to those that are really in need more often. Mm -hmm. So do you normally go to those areas or can people come to your organization or you're just mostly going out into the community? We are mostly going out into the community mm -hmm. to do our work. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but we're looking for some more people to join us. 
Yeah. Well, I can imagine it stays pretty busy with all the activities that you're having. And I think some people would probably be um, are surprised that, you know, our seniors are very vulnerable. Yes. And so the fact that you are actually going into these um, senior citizen homes or nursing homes or mm -hmm. whatever, helping seniors. Um, they love it. Every time we go there, they say, oh, you're back again. And I say, yes, we are. And we play bingo with them. They probably don't get a lot of visitors either. Yeah, true. They probably don't, but they're yeah, so happy to see us when we come. Wow. And so is it mostly um, just, you know, interacting with them? Interacting or? with them. They just love the company. I guess they just love us. Just come there just to even, even talk to them. Wow. So, but we play bingo with them and have fun. And wow. we bring prizes, and they love that too. <laughs> now, talk about the homeless population. So, when you when you talk about going out to uh, the meet the homeless, um, you know you provide food and and yeah. I don't know what what clothes, kinds of things everything. clothes change of um, clothes. Last well, this summer we did a combination of things all in one. Mm -hmm. It was like a big mall. We had like, food, we had snacks, we had um, clothes, we had. Of toiletries, everything that the homeless population could use. Wow. And they were just out there, they were out there in numbers. I really love that. We're going to try that again. So, do you see an increase in the number of homeless um, population overall? I don't see an increase in the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's, it's amazing to me, I, I sort of get on this uh, soapboxes that we're the wealthiest country yeah. in the world, um, and yet we have mm -hmm. this huge problem in our country yeah. of the homeless. I was very surprised because, I mean, when I was, well, before 2016, 2006, mm -hmm. 2006 I lived in D.C. My first time moving to D.C., I was surprised to see homeless sleeping in the streets, and it was the winter time, it was steaming on the grates, you know, where the air be blowing out the mm -hmm. out the vents. To get warm, to stay yeah, warm. Yeah, I was like, wow, I could not believe that. Because I had never seen that before. Mm -hmm. Never. Well, you have a big heart, so thank goodness for organizations like RISE to help the homeless, as well as to help our, our senior citizens. Um, we're going to take a break now, short break, and we're going to be back and we're going to hear more from Mr. Reginald Braxton and talking about RISE and learning more about the organization and what they do. We'll be right back. Welcome back to For the Common Good with Juanita Farrow. And we've been talking to Reginald Braxton, who is the Executive Director of RISE, which stands for Restoring Individuals Through Social and Spiritual Empowerment. What a major accomplishment, starting an organization um, from the ground up. Um, and we talked about your inspiration for starting the organization, but I want to talk more about you. I, I just think it's really it's humbling to, to serve the population that you're serving um, in communities and reaching people that are most in need um, and most vulnerable in those communities. Um, you're also a teacher as well. So tell us a little bit about your, your teaching okay. background. My teaching background, actually I'm a chemistry major. But I teach math, mm -hmm. which kind of go together. Um, so, I mean, the kids are nice. Um, easy to get along with once you get on that side. You know, you have to play along with them. <laughs> <laughs> um, but other than that, they're good, they're good kids. Um, but it's amazing you, I mean, you're teaching and you're, you know, chemistry, math, and now this nonprofit. I mean, that seem very different okay. things okay. and areas. I try to be all I can be, because I do lots of other things. I play the piano. Um, piano. Oh, you play the piano? Okay, okay, now. <laughs> church, church, and I just oh. play every Sunday, every Sunday. Wow. But since we have this pandemic, that's so why I don't have uh -huh. church anymore to play for. So, not yet, until the church opens back up. But, um, yeah, so I, mean, I try to be, try to do all I 
Try to be all I can be. Well, you know, obviously you're you're passionate about helping others and, and, and blessing other people. Um, and so it's, it's more than just business to you. It's spiritual. Um, you know, it's giving back uh, to the community. So kudos for that. So if somebody, you know, wanted to find out about your organization, um, how do they normally find you or find out about you? Or, you know, say somebody is in need um, and... You know, how, how would they find out about your organization or could they? Okay. Um, we have a website that mm -hmm. you, can, you can visit. Um, and I, I must say, a lot of people know me. Ah, uh, so it's because a lot of people know, know you. Know me, yeah, right. yeah. I mean, I can go to places just like I can go to an event. And someone says, that's Reggie Braxton. Was, mm -hmm. How you know me? Like, because you, you do this, you do that, you do it, you know, all of this. So it makes a difference when you're really helping you're in really, communities, people yeah, understand mm -hmm. what you do. So that's how people, more that kind of outreach. And so, you know, it's got to be, um, I mean, your funding. I mean, you know, nonprofits today are very challenged with sustainability. How do I stay in business? How do I get more money? And they're having to compete against so many other nonprofits and people mm -hmm. asking for support. How, how does that work? Okay, um, we have uh, volunteers, and lots of our volunteers also donate towards the cause. Whatever we have something, they always donate. They usually donate something. Oh. So that's one way. Then we have um, um, uh, fundraisers. Mm -hmm. We have like talent shows, um, gospel programs. So you raise money for the organization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we have some businesses that also contribute, if okay. we ask them. What types of things are they contributing? You mean like goods, goods. and materials mm -hmm. and things? Or uh, gift cards. Mm -hmm. Ah, interesting. Okay. Um, do, you, do you accept money? We accept money. <laughs> said, Always oh. accept money, yeah. <laughs> Whenever people offer us something, we'll take it, no matter what it is. We'll take that, sure, thank you. Wow. Uh, yeah, um, because people, you know, are going to want to know, um, you know, especially with, um, you know, so many different needs and the things that you're doing, you know, how can I help? Um, what about grants and things like that? We haven't received any grants yet, nor have we applied again. Maybe we, that's why we haven't received any. Right. But we have not yet. We need a, a grant person, a person that understands grants. Mm -hmm. And I have not reached that seat yet. Mm -hmm. Being that I am the director, I guess I should know, mm -hmm. but I have not. Well, you know, you're wearing a lot of hats, okay. too. And so, you know, as the organization continues to grow, to be, yeah. you know, that's definitely an area, um, you know, to explore. Um, because you want to make sure that you have lots of different resources coming in from different areas. Right. But, I mean, obviously, you've made it work mm -hmm. so well. Um, but you're also, you know, wearing a lot of hats to do that, too. Yeah. Um, so, um, so talk a little bit um, about um, the outreach. You know, when you go out in the community, do you have, like, certain people going out to... Okay. We have... No. Normally, I would just post, I will call them, or I send them an, um, an email. Tell them that we're going to be doing this, this, this okay. on such and such a date. If you are available, you are welcome to come out. And normally we, generally we normally have a good turnout. Wow. Um, so I have some um, regulars mm -hmm. that are always um, just going out mm -hmm. you know, to help. Then I have some that are not, you know, when I, we got to, I guess I call them or bag them, but I guess, you know, if you got something else you got to do, then you do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. And if you have time for us, then come on, you're welcome to join us. Mm -hmm. But you probably have a few that are constantly yes. there and supporting you. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. This is, this is really awesome. Um, we're going to take a short break now, but when we come back, we want to talk about, you know, if you had that magical ball and you could have anything you wanted for the future, um, what would that look like to you? What is it that you would want for this organization? Obviously, you've put a lot of time and invested in it, so we want to just talk a little bit about your vision for the future. Okay. 
We're going to take a short break and we're going to be right back. You've been listening to For the Common Good with Juanita Farrow. Welcome back to For the Common Good with Juanita Farrow, and we're here talking to Reginald Braxton, and he is the executive director of an organization called RISE. And so I wanted to ask you, Mr. Braxton, what is your vision for the future for RISE? If you could have that crystal ball and you could wish anything you wanted for this organization, it could be anything you wanted it to be. Now is your chance. What would be that vision for RISE? RISE is, one thing is, I want it to be, to be a bigger, bigger is a word, a bigger office space, a bigger storage mm -hmm. space, mm -hmm. um, a lot more people, a volunteers, it's just to, to reach out to more um, areas or people, um, everything's going to be bigger. Um, mm -hmm. So you want to cover, um, still working in the same area, same areas. Have, have, but just have a larger, increase your capacity of yes. the organization, right? More, more volunteers. More volunteers, more money coming in, more of everything. So maybe, um, and just thinking, you know, because I, I, I have a lot of opportunity to work with nonprofits around the country, and I'm thinking perhaps if someone could volunteer some time for grant writing and write that one grant that could bring in some money for the organization. Sometimes it just, you, you just need that, you know, big push. Right. And that w sometimes one thing can change right. um, the whole story and, um, and allow you to build that capacity that you need. So you can find that one person, person to volunteer yes. to do some grant writing and then get that one grant, then maybe that will help pay for, you know, maybe a part-time person, actually a paid staff person that could provide some of those services. Lots of possibilities there. Okay. But, but then again, you're wearing a lot of hats, so you got to move into that slowly because it's like, how do I do all of those things? That's part of the strategic planning mm -hmm. piece of the organization. But then you've also got the side where you wear the hats yeah. and you've got to do the work. Hands on, right? Right. Oh, wow. So if someone listening to the show now, because this show uh, will air in markets around the country, in California and Washington, D.C. area and Atlanta. If someone's listening to the show, what is it that they could do to help your organization right now? Send in a donation. <laughs> yes, I'm <doing. laughs> To um, the point, he goes, send in the donation. Um, send the money, yes. we'll take it. Um, any way that you can help is like, if you want to send us um, encouraging word to keep us going, mm -hmm. that would help us also. Wow. Um, if you're interested in helping us, just help us the best way you can. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, um, obviously donations are fine, uh, you'd accept gift cards and things like that. You know, the simple things, that, yes. because mm -hmm. I, I know for, um, especially with the homeless population, probably having a gift card that they could actually use that gift card mm -hmm. and buy some necessary items and things like that, that works really well. Yes. Um, some, you know, I don't know about you, but many of the organizations don't give out money per se for food and things like that, but they give the gift cards that allow them oh, to right. purchase mm -hmm. um, those kinds of items. So you would accept that from, from people, um, or yeah, there's an opportunity for them to, um, to talk about your organization and maybe dedicate a month where the employees in their organization might support a nonprofit and it might be yours, who knows? Mm -hmm. So there's all kinds of yes. possibilities right there. You know, okay, that's just a suggestion for my <laughs> viewers here because <laughs> um, you're doing some wonderful things and could use that extra, extra help. 
Um, so how, how would someone, I, I know you have a website, do you yes. want to provide your website? Is that the best way for someone to find out more yes, about your organization? Yes, to find out more about our organization, go to our website, www.lessrise.com. Let's, L-E-T-S-R-I-S-S-E dot -S -S -E com. Wow. Thank you so much, Mr. Braxton, for being on the show. Thank you for inviting me. I enjoyed myself. I am so... And I think I have learned a lot, too, from you. <laughs> well, you know, it's about sharing. Okay. It's about sharing information because at the end of the day, um, you know, our heart is with people who are vulnerable, our seniors and um, homeless people. And we're doing our part to try to help. So this yes. is part of that equation. You get to talk about your services and and um, and and get some helpful ideas as to some things that maybe you can do. But thank you so much for all that you do and for giving back to the community. Thank you. And thank you for tuning in to For the Common Good with Juanita Farrow.